Happy Friday, Pat. We decided hey, to come on uh, earlier today. We're not live. We're recording it uh, because today is your day. And uh, I figured you'd be drinking by three, so we didn't want to. Yeah. 50, have you I mean, I'm 59 years, but uh, 58 years around the sun. Don't feel well, a day. God knows you're hard enough to control sober. I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> but happy birthday old man that's pretty cool um so we oh i gotta show you this i shared this with you yesterday um i went out to a town called cq it's about an hour from where i'm at farther west actually almost two hours and driving down the street i looked to my left and there are at least a dozen bald eagles no way the, holy mackerel there. yeah and uh, huh. they're feeding on some fish or something down there. It was pretty, pretty interesting. Wow. Look at that. Blue sky. That's amazing. So, um, that is amazing. But, yeah, it, it was, it was uh, quite the sight to see. Now, I have, I grew up here and never, ever do I recall seeing a bald eagle, ever. And now they're really? everywhere. I go down the store down the street. There's one that's circling all the time. And I see deer everywhere walking around town. I never saw deer when I grew up here. They're coming down, I guess, because word got out the town has more food than the mountains. Come down here, you can have apples, flowers. So they're they're just walking everywhere. It's amazing. I call them funny looking dogs. But here's where we're at. I'm going to remove this for a second. I want to tee this up. So uh, as many of you know, we interviewed Barry Habib this week, which was great. And we were excited that we could have what we consider a big national player um, on the on our tiny, tiny channel. Um, and uh, so it was fun to get his insight on where he thinks he's headed. But with a little asterisk by it that says, whatever you watch on YouTube, including us, take it with a grain of salt and take the information that's presented and say, well, what part of it? Should I watch now? You know, in other words, he said he thinks that interest rates are going to start coming down and that the Fed won't raise rates in July. Well, now we've got something to look at. Will they or won't they? Based on what he's seeing, he's saying, no, they they won't. They won't have any choice because inflation is going to be so improved that they're probably not going to pull the trigger. OK, whether or not I agree with that or disagree with that, we know how to watch for that. Right. Mm hmm. And the same with any other YouTuber that's on here. When they put out information, remember, it's not emotion, it's math. And so there's, it's supply and demand at all times. Even Dave Ramsey, who there's some things I agree with him, some things I don't. When you listen to him, back it up, go in and verify it. So I like having people on that verify what their thoughts are. In other words, here's what I'm saying. Here's the mm -hmm. chart. Here's what it tells us. Here's what to look for versus just spitting out and going, well, real estate up went, went up really fast, so therefore it's, it has to crash. That doesn't convince me of anything. That yeah. doesn't mean that real estate can't crash. It just means that that argument doesn't sit well with me. What do you think? No, I, no, I totally agree. I mean, it's like when I was a stockbroker, I'd have one of my old girlfriends. She goes, I heard this stock was really good. Uh, what do you mean? Good. You know, just give me some, yeah. give me some, give me some basis to, to, you know, go off of good, you know, good or bad. You know, I heard that stock was bad. Well, I, I'm not going to go off of that. That's just emotion. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. So it, you know, and that's, that's one of the reasons here, you know, I track the seven day moving averages, you know, I share this all the time, but you know, it, it shows us that new listings have kind of flattened out right now and new contracts have kind of flattened out, but both of them, are excruciatingly low, but both of them are trending at about 84% again. In other words, 84% of new listings are going under contract. We already know because we saw it and experienced that when you get down to 65%, then there's pressure on pricing to go down further. So that's a really simple number to look at and to keep track of in our, our local market, along with, of course, this chart that I had up earlier, and that is our active listings. At one point, the way it was trending, we thought we'd end up going down here and being about 7,000 um, units, but we're not. It's it's hanging kind of flat for the simple fact that 
there's not that many choices. Now, MLS doesn't track all the new construction numbers, but they're doing quite well. And so the other things that we need to look at are closings over list price. How much pressure is there? How much bidding wars are going on? Not that much. 21.9% up from 19%. So they went up by 2%, but mostly in the three to $400,000 range, which there just isn't much. Mm -hmm. There was 1,695 homes and their average over bid was only $6,000. So it's not getting nuts out there, but as this number climbs, that means there's pressure on inventory again, correct? So can I jump in real quick? Can yeah. I jump? Um, Barry Habib, Barry in uh, his uh, market report this morning, he said uh, he had some information. I'll, I'll kind of jump into this real quick here. I mean, I'll let you go I'll just to jump in on that thought. He said the May Realtor Confidence Index showed that housing competition is heating up. There were 3.3 offers per sale, up from 3.1 in the previous report. It's the highest reading since June. And he goes, for, and for perspective, the whole time high was 5.5% in April of 2022. He goes, additionally, 31% of the homes sold over the above the list price. He goes, it's an interesting stat. 25% of the buyers waived inspection contingencies, the highest level since June of 2022. That's surprising. <laughs> so surprising and yet dangerous. So, yeah. but again, those are the real numbers, right? I mean, you know, nobody's making those up. And then we see yeah. um, this is number of price changes per week. And they, um, it's price decreases, let's be honest. So we went from 1,266 to 1,354. So we went up about 100 units of people lowering their prices. And that happens when uh, you start out too hot. Then the other thing to look at is list price per square foot active listings. It's not going down. List pricing is going up because they can. Now, the other thing that was talked about too, and this can be tracked by anybody, go to fred.com, which is the Federal Reserve. And that is how much mortgage-backed securities are being offloaded by the central bank. So you can watch it here and see they're coming down. There's 2.5 trillion versus 2.7 trillion. So they came down. Um, those are all numbers that people can, can take a look at. Now, whether or not, one of the things that we do know is if we do hit 5.5%, Sales are going to pick up. We already saw that once, right? Yep. What we don't know is if 5.5 is going to be enough to where inventory starts to grow. Because if we end up at 5.5 and sales pick up, that's that's bad math for buyers. That's good math yeah. for sellers. Yeah. Um, so, you know, do we want that? Do we don't want that? Well, it all depends on the individual. So I just like to watch those numbers and see what happens. But we already know what happens when we hit 5.5. And I think you, well, that's what, that's what, that's what that Barry, yeah, that's what Barry, you know, obviously that's what Barry alluded to in, in our, our call. He said, you know, he did, he went into that. He says, you know, high rates right now, you know, and I know people probably took that the wrong way. They're like, high rates are your friend because it's, it's basically limiting competition out there. People are, and I saw this article that my mom in the Arizona Republic, my mom gets, she's one of these, like it's the paper every week. Sunny newspaper still get the, so she gets the coupons, but um, you know they just. She said, you know, Tina Tambor was, you know, she said, I'm just going to quote some of these things in this article. She said, Tina Tambor said, you know, predicting interest rates is a bad bet. You know, obviously it's tough. She goes, mortgage rates are the wild card that could give housing market a boost, and said um, the MBA, the Mortgage Bankers Association, is predicting the rates could fall to 5.2 percent by the end of the year. Obviously, that Barry's saying that rates could fall too, but later in the article, I thought this was a very telling um, survey, and this is what we've been talking about. I, I think it's, this spells out a lot right here. It says more than 70% of potential home buyers are waiting for rates to fall to 5.5%, according to John Burns Real Estate Consulting. Yep, and that gets to my original question that I had. It seems to me that both sides are waiting. What are they waiting for? So we know that buyers are waiting for lower rates and lower prices, understandable. And we think based on empirical data that buyer or sellers are 
also waiting with lower rates because they don't want to offload a lower rate and get a higher one. Now, yeah, there was a tactic shared that said, well, you know, some of these people at low rates have also, uh, you know, taken on more debt, uh, car payments of uh, 10% and credit cards at 22. And, you know, perhaps if you look at their blended rate, that making that move is not, you know, it's not that uh, <clears throat> not that bad of a deal. But, uh, you know, that's probably not a majority of people. So I think yeah. um, that might work in some instances where you can say, well, have you considered this? Um, yeah. The, the other thing I wanted to touch on, too, is that, you know, um, I don't care how smart the Fed chairman is or how educated he is. I just want to watch and see what they do. So I think yeah. I agree with uh, the point made that said they're looking at lagging data. And they are. So, and, you know, and he may, they may uh, make moves until they break something and then come back. And we know that because they've done it. They've done it mm -hmm. before. And they they make a move, go, oh, oh, went too far or didn't go too far enough. So mm -hmm. I don't care whether he's an economist or he's a lawyer or, you know, if he was a janitor, uh, there's numbers to look at that says, what moves are they making? Now, we did hear in the congressional testimony, and it it was making headlines, but it shouldn't have where basically he's saying, well, we're probably going to raise rates two more times. Well, the market looked at that and goes, yeah, well, he said that before. Um, so we're not going to react to that. So the interest rates uh, hardly made a move, did they? No, they really didn't. I mean, yeah, basically we're uh, to go back to my chart here. You know, today we're up 19 basis points on the five and a half cube. Bond, the U.S. Treasury is down five basis points. Once again, we're kind of just muddling along here. You know, this is obviously a short last quarter, but if you pull it out, like I said, once I've been pulling out, you got this channel that we're just kind of stuck in here. Yeah, we have within this channel, we're having some crazy days where the market's down 40 basis points or 45. It was down, you know, got slapped around yesterday um, based on obviously over new, you know, the world. You know, you had other banks raising rates. We're sitting tight. So there's a lot of commotion around the world of what's going to happen with these rates. But if you look, pull it out the longer term, we're just stuck in this channel and kind of in this waiting game. You know, like you said, we have you pull it back, you know, quarter by quarter. It looks obviously a little bit more. The gyrations look a little bit more crazy, but it's just once again, they're just stuck in this range and playing around here. And now going back to what we talked about, the rates. You know, right now we're, you know, I'm pulling up this one bank, you know, next bank, $475,000 purchase, 5%, you know, down. I mean, you're looking right now at rates at the high sixes, 6.875 for a cost of $1,600. This is just one of my, you know, one of my banks. Um, so that's just the general area that we're in right now, a 30 year. But to Barry's point, you know, as far as waiting, you know, I've just, a lot of people, they don't know the exact numbers. Like you hear that number that people are waiting for five and a half percent. You know, okay, so at 6.875, 475 purchase, your principal and interest is $2,964. If rates were to drop to say 5.625, it's 25.98. It's about a, see, I think there was a $366 difference. If I'm not mistaken, let me just make sure my math is right again. Um, not the Three three hundred twenty nine dollar a month difference. So, but here to go from six point eight seven five to five and five eighths, you're going to see the bond market pull back about three points, and that's that's a pretty hefty pullback. You know, in terms of what pricing. if what if, uh, and I know you haven't crunched numbers on this, but what if, and we hear this a lot, um, our price is going to go back to pre pandemic levels. That's certainly the hope out there for a lot of buyers that miraculously will just go back to pre-pandemic levels as things remain the same now it doesn't look likely but what if that 475 house was 410 at the current interest rate how much would they say per month uh, 400 let's see 400 dollars okay so so waiting waiting for the $465,000 price to be driven down because of high interest rates. And it drove down the price of the house from 465 to 410 saves you a hundred dollars more than if interest rates were to go from 6.5 to 5.5. Yeah. That makes sense. Yep. 
Yeah. So, so as you look at the market and you decide what your price point is and what you're waiting for, those are the things that you should look at and consider. Not yeah. YouTuber's opinion of value, not YouTuber's opinion of directions, but you need to do your math and say, okay, I would really like prices to come down at this level. Now, are they going to come down at this level if interest rates get in the fives? No, they won't. We know that 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 price will start going up. Now, mm -hmm. if as many people think, if interest rates start to climb 7% and 8% and that drives prices down, now you've got more math. So now you want to say, okay, this $465,000 house, because the market's been beaten down so bad, is now $390,000 at 8%. Get out the mortgage calculator. I've got the link below. You can find it on my website and do the math. Um, I thought it was fun. I thought it was fun interviewing him. Yeah. Certainly a, a great guy to talk to. It was very entertaining. And uh, we'll see what uh, what happens. It, he gave us a whole bunch of things that we can now look for. Oh, yeah. No doubt. That's I mean, I'm excited to see. So, Well, I, you know, he's, his biggest thing is, you know, going back to what, you know, he's been beating on the Fed. And um, like you said, look at what what's really going on and you got <clears throat> you have to kind of look look at the characteristics or the personality of the fed and um they have not been right the last couple of years honestly and that's what he's been kind of beaten on is like these guys are looking at lagging indicators they've been wrong like look look go back the last two years you know there's uh, this inflation inflation's transitory and then there's one fed that says oh we need more inflation <laughs> you know just uh, it, yeah, Just you don't have to go back too far to to hear the the, the dialogue that was out there that said um, we don't see rates going down in the near future or going up. Um, what was their quote that they said? Anytime soon, um, or in the in the I can't remember the exact quote, but anyway, they were just paddling to death saying rates are not going up. Rates are not going up. A year later, rates went up. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the thing he takes a look at. It. He's digging behind the numbers, and uh, yeah, he was saying that Janet Yellen. He goes, um, uh, Janet Yellen said that this is a, this said this on the odds of a recession. My odds of it, if anything, have gone down because look at the resilience of the labor market and and, and inflation's coming down. And he goes, this is an interesting take. As we know, the labor market is a la lagging indicator. And inflation always falls during a recession, so it does not make a lot of sense to include that as part of her rationale. So she's, I, you know, I just, I don't, I believe Barry more than, he, I know he has not been, you know, he, he's got a good crystal ball. Yeah, the banking crisis, people say, well, Barry said rates were going to be in the mid-fives. Well, Barry's doing the best he can. I mean, he's been, I, I'll, I'll take his guesstimates over anybody else on the Fed. But right we now. know what to look at. So, I mean, so Janet yeah. Yellen said that that the, the job market is resilient. Well, then we just continue to watch the jobs data and see what it what it ends up looking like. We we don't have to agree or disagree with it. We just know what numbers they're tracking and we need to watch. But again, you know, there, there's a lot more that goes on with central bank policy than just real estate. So they may make moves that that hurt real estate terribly. Uh, that maybe are needed for other parts of the economy. We don't know. We don't look, I mean, they're not just looking at housing. We are, because that's the industry we're in. They're looking at global events. I mean, I can't remember what country it is that they're going to have to raise their interest rates to 40% because their inflation rate is 240% right now. Turkey, Turkey, Turkey. Yeah. So, um, you know, they're looking at that stuff too. They're looking at China, um, lowering their rates which will include which will increase global supply of of uh, money going back and forth so it's not all about good old arizona real estate so i think we have to kind of take that with a grain of salt and but yeah on in the big picture um when we have inflation we have higher rates that's just a given when we have deflation we end up gravitating towards lower rates if we have uh, a recession Recessions do not mean higher rates. Recessions also don't mean crashing real estate prices. Some recessions, when they're major, do mean crashing real estate prices. It means a very struggling economy and prices go down. And as people sit back and look and go, ooh, that's my chance, you might be unemployed then. So, you know, you just don't know what's going to happen. The people that have saved their money that are ready to buy cash 
are just wringing their hands waiting for that kind of a recession. But um, it, you know, now you get into the, um, the discussion, is it going to be a mild recession or is it going to be a hard recession? You don't know because recessions are viewed in the rear view mirror. Yeah, you know, they are. They yes. tell you last quarter was down 3.5 GDP. Oh, I thought it was bad. Kind of like a bad relationship. <laughs> Wait, are we? Yeah, there we are, Pat. We're 23 minutes in, and you. <laughs> That's your breaking point. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, oh sure. Well, Pat, I'm going to let you go to go have a very happy birthday. And uh, I'm going to tool around up here in the Northwest, do a little bit more sightseeing today, and go visit some family. I'm helping my brother chop wood. So I'm like, oh, you know. I'm feeling it. I'm an old man. I'm sure everybody, I'm sure everybody's looking at this video saying, my God, he doesn't look a day over 60. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm sure. And, you know, kudos on the new filter you bought for your camera too. I think it's really, it's working wonders. (laughs) (laughs) Have a great day, Pat. Yep. Thanks everybody. Take care. Take care.